Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Charlie Brown character. Imagine it 10 inches by 6 inches, and the idea is to route out the insides of him, and then we'll use a scroll saw literally just to cut it out. And then we'll put the nice paint inside, sand it down, and hopefully we can put it on the shed with the rest of our projects. As always for me, I like to use just cheap rough fencing wood you pay next to nothing for this really and it is rough when you get it but a couple of minutes sanding it down and it does sand up really nice with a belt sander or sand planer or whatever you prefer to use as always for me we've printed off our template we've stuck it to our wood with painters tape now i like to use carbon paper underneath like so and literally just draw around that there's nothing too complicated on this it will take you five minutes to do I've seen certain routers, they will just stick the wood, uh, the paper straight to the wood like so and route over the top. I did try it the once, so I definitely won't be doing it again. It's not for me, that one. So we've got it on. I like to use a pen. We've gone over the top with our carbon underneath. That's nicely drawn out. That way you can use that template over and over again if you want to. So there's our little Charlie Brown on there. No problem. You see by them squiggly lines. Take a couple of seconds to route, uh, shade in the areas that we want to route out. You might go away, come back, and start removing the mouth bit. We want that bit leaving there. So we're going to remove most of the head, leaving his mouth, nose, and his little quiffy ear there. Most of the shirt piece, the hand, and the feet, and the sock. Once we've routed them all out. This will leave us a nice framework all the way around, which we'll paint black. We'll paint in the colours it's meant to be. Once that's all done, obviously, before that, we will cut it out with a scroll saw. We'll talk about the scroll saw nearer the time. As always for me, now this is just a personal preference. I like to use CNC bits. They call it a little packet like that. These are 10s and 15s. These ones are 20s and 30s. So you get different degrees on the end. Not a lot to look at really, I must admit, I, can, I struggle to find out what's a 20 and what's a 15. But it's basically just the angle of that piece here. Now they're very sharp and they do cut really, really nice. There is other bits out there, people like to use profile bits to cut with. I like to do my lines with a CNC bit. Find what works for you. Obviously they've got a Dremel size shaft, a 3.175mm. So if you're using a quarter inch router... You need what they call an adapter reducer, call it like so. 6.35 millimeter. You literally would just slot your CNC bit into there. Now that will fit your quarter inch router, no problem. Notice I've gone into the silver end and you want the darkened end inside your router. That will work fantastic. And I like to use this to do all my lines. Literally go, go around here. Remember, we're going to remove all this, so you want to go up to the line on that side up to the line on that side never route out on the line itself because obviously we've got 3.175 depth there if we're going to go fairly deep so the deeper you go on that line the deeper you go on that line you reduce that distance in between be it by a couple of mil at either side or whatever so always route up to the line if you do an outset moving on the background up to the line if you're going inset up to the line that way that way you're not going to alter the shape of the actual image itself and like i just said we'll go around all the lines with this we won't do the outside line because we are going to cut it out remember you could leave this on this board no problem it's a nice little size and route out the background the same depth as the inside of him so it stands out on the piece of wood i just prefer to cut them out to go with the rest of the project so we've gone around with our cnc bit remember 20 degree a 20 degree today we're going to use once we've done that, I'll pop in one of these end milling bits. Now there's all sorts out there again, what you prefer to use. These are nice straight flush bits, Imperial Metrics I believe. That one there, the 1.8 millimeter, I believe it was. I used to use that on all my projects. I used to do the line work, the clear out and everything. And then I found the CNC bits and the end milling bits. So find out what works for you. I'll just use these little ones today. So on these ones, we'll find one that's a nice size for us. And it's just a simple case of removing the CNC bit like so. You slide that in now. 
they come with these barriers on now I did try to remove that at first but it's solid and the idea is you push that up to your adapter call it like so pop that into your router set it to the same depth and that will just use nicely for clearing all this out okay that's it for now so we're popping our CNC bit again set it to a knife depth there is depth gauges out there you can purchase if you like to have a set in two millimeter three millimeter four meter I just tend to have a piece of wood handy like so with a lot of different settings on and I'll just look at one and think this one will do for us you can mark it off or because we are using this as scrap wood basically the back piece you could do uh, route out three or four different holes on there pick one that suits you I'm going to go for about three millimeters today for the depth of this inside section which is basically the same thickness as your CNC bit okay let's pop this in the router and we'll start routing this one out Right, you can see from that we've gone around our inner lines, no problem. Now it's a bit powdery and whatever, that's just the nature of the wood. Remember, just cheap fencing wood at the end of the day. So we've done all our in, inner lines like we just said. I've removed these four sections there with the CNC bit. That just pops off really easy. And you can see there by looking, like I said previously, you can still see the pencil lines. Because obviously I've routed right up to the line there, but not actually on the line itself. And the same around there. Now there's our depth we've got. So what we've got to do now is to remove the CNC bit and replace it with an uh, milling bit. These are fine. There is different bits out there, remember. Just pick what you want. I'm just going to go for a green one today. This this will come off really easy. If all you have is a CNC bit, you can do a full project with a CNC bit. It'll just take you longer to do. And there's no rush. Just enjoy yourself. Now, the reason why I do use a CNC bit, somebody sent me a message asking why I don't just use the end milling bits. You can use them. You could do a full project just with a packet of those picking one out and you could do your lines and everything with that the only problem you will find because that is round you're coming in to do if i can just show you quickly on here into that corner piece here or one of those you're not going to get that sharp corner if that makes sense to you because that router bit is round so as you come in you're obviously going to get a rounded corner to the shape of whatever bit you're using so that's just the reason why I prefer to use CNC bits because it just lets you to have a bit more proper corner pieces that make sense to you. But yes, if that's all you have, you could do the full project just with that. But it's just a personal preference. Anyway, we've got it in now. We'll pop it in the router. We'll set it to the same depth of that one. These were my little mics I did on the side there, my little testers. And there's my little three mil bit. And that one just fits nice and flush with that's the one I went for. You work it out what's going to suit you. Okay, let's pop this end milling bit in and we'll start clearing this one out. Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way around with our end milling bits. Let's clear that out nicely. Now it's still a little bit rough, remember, but we are going to go around with a Dremel and an engraving bit of some description just to give it a general tidy out and get right in there. 
and sort it out before we actually start painting it. Now I'm going to cut this out today, like I've just said previously, with a scroll saw. For those that's new to scroll saw, if I just show you quickly the three blades that are used on a scroll saw. Now there is fancier ones, there's some have teeth going down and teeth coming up. But your basic, basic blades are your, your pinned one like so. That's called a pin blade obviously because it's got a pin at both ends. And that just clips onto your more cheaper, basicer models of scroll saw, if that makes sense. You want the teeth facing towards you at all times and you want to feel smooth on the way down and you want to feel that roughness on the way up. That way you know you've got your blade in the right way. That's, this will work fine for this one today. It's all outer cuts and they'll go around there no problem whatsoever. But if you're doing more intricate cuts, you would need a pinless blade. Obviously, it has no pins and they're more your fancier updated versions and it just fits with a clamp, top and bottom, take your tension up. Same again, you want the T facing towards you. You'll soon feel those smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. I don't know if you can even see the teeth on that one. No, not going to get nowhere near, are we? Try that. There we go. Very fine teeth, but fantastic little blade. If you prefer a straight, flat blade, as that one is called. First myself, you've seen it before. Spiral blade for me. I do have to use these adapter clamps on my old drapper saw. Obviously, if you have a modern version saw, they will just clamp in top and bottom. Now, they are spiralled. They're called spiralled because obviously the teeth are spiralled the full length of the saw, like so. So, basically, you could cut in any direction with that one. There we go. Any direction with that, up, down, left or right. Whereas, if you're using one of these other two blades, you can only cut as you're pushing the wood away from you, if that makes sense. So, if we were to start there, we would come down to there, and then we'd have to turn the wood, do that little section, turn the wood, do that section, turn the wood, do that section, turn the wood, do that section, and all that. There's a lot of turning, twisting, and twisting. Some people can do phenomenal work with the straight blade. It just doesn't work for me. So I do a spiral blade, and literally we can just come in here and just move your wood like that so, along and down and that way afterwards. So basically, you could cut this small little project project out like this without turning the wood the once. Okay, you'll see as we go along. I'll pop this into the scroll saw now, and we'll literally cut this out before we start cleaning it up. Right, we've made it all the way round with our Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. Remember, you could use any blade to cut this out. It's just a personal preference. Now, it's quite dusty. That's just one of the issues with the spiral blade. But the cut itself, I've certainly got no, no problem with that whatsoever. Not a lot of clearing out to do. If you look at the back section there, you've got that bit of fluff in there. Which, obviously, on this piece, you can just sand off like that. And that's it. That's that done. And that's smooth enough for me. People do complain that you don't get a nice smooth cut. I personally can't find anything wrong with that one. Okay. Now I like to use one of these flexi cables on the end of a Dremel. Cannot recommend these enough. Just cheap eBay again, remember. Not original Dremel parts. I just don't see the point in spending a lot of money. Three times, four times as much as what you would pay for one of those. And it does exactly the same job. Now I've got one of sanding drum on there at the moment. They're really cheap as well. And we'll literally just use that to go around the edges. Plus a bit of sandpaper. And then we'll also go over the end project with a mouse sander. Just to make it all nice and smooth. Now to get inside these, it is fairly nice apart from the dust. <laughs> it's not too bad. 
but there's certain areas around here we'll just do a little bit of cleaning out so i like to use these engraving bits good old ebay again or amazon if that's your preference you've got the ones on the right here they're your engraving bits they're obviously a lot smaller these chunky ones on the right they're your carving bits and they carve fantastic just cheap specials again nothing fantastic i like to use one with a flat end like so you can just about see that he says hopefully i do film off my mobile phone so you're just going to bear with me with the quality of the filming but we get the general idea that's got a nice flat head on we'll pop that into the flexi cable and if you just go around and give it all a general tidy up like that over the old piece and then we'll be ready for the painting side of things okay we'll pop that in the flexi cable and we'll start tidying this one up <laughs> Right, that's enough sanding down for me. I'm quite happy enough with that. You can sand forever more. It's not my favourite thing to do. And this is plenty near enough to go on the side of the shed. Now, just before we get to the painting side of things, for hanging purposes, I'll just route out a slit in the back with a T-slot bit got a quarter inch shaft on it and this one's five sixteenths and the smallest one i could find at the time for the size of screws i use i would have liked to have found a small one but generally what it is if i can just show you quickly that's what you will end up with now i did a couple of samples on a piece of wood obviously allowing for the thickness we don't want to go too crazy remember we've routed out on the inside of that so you don't want to go too deep or you might end up coming through the other side but you have plenty to play with on this fencing wood. Obviously, your wood will be totally different. So I found one that was I was happy with. I can just find it. And that's basically the one I use all the time. So we have our T-slot bit in the router. You can just about see it there. And I would set that in there like so. Put it down all the way down. Lock it in position on my old Black & Decker. We know that's going to slide across. And we know we're good to, to, to go. Excuse me. Uh, so we've marked up a pencil line. And all we're going to do is pop that on there. We'll load that into the piece and route it across. Slide it up. Slide it back out again. And that will be ideal for our project to hang with. And basically when you get your screw light. So you put that into your wall, your fence or whatever. You hook it in where the hole is. And then just slide your project across. Now, the less you have hanging, if you screw this right in, just so you have the head of the screw showing, that will get in there really tight. If it's too tight, you can literally just take the screw out of the wall slightly, a bit more looser. But once that's on there, you'll find that's plenty enough to hold the project in shape. So I'll quickly just route this one out just to show you, and then we'll move on to the painting side of things. Right, we're heading towards the finishing line. We've sanded it all down nicely. We've put our slit in the back, remember. So all that's left now is painting it, and then we'll spray on some nice crystal clear at the end, just to give it a bit of protection and a nice shine. Now, I'm going to use acrylic paints today. I normally use painter's touch paints, but acrylics work just as good. In just case of just brushing all these inner areas nice and quickly, we are going to sand this down after the colours have gone in, just to make it nice and sharper for the black to go on. Now normally when you're painting wood, you might need some kind of wood sealer. You can purchase that separately. And you just brush it on, and once it's dry, it will seal the side walls of the routed out area. If you imagine this being made like fibres, like straws, and you've cut into those straws, when you put your paint in, it will bleed into those side straws. So you won't get a nice crispy edge. Personally, I never bother with fencing wood. I've don't have no issues with it bleeding at all. 
But as we are going to paint it all completely coloured, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not going to put any sealant on there or nothing. Just straight in with the acrylic paint. And then we'll put the black on afterwards so nobody's going to see it, even if it did bleed. Okay, I'll go away and paint this. And then we'll come back when this project will basically be finished. <laughs> That's it, this little project is finished. Now I gave him three or four coats of the 151 yacht varnish, gloss finish on that one, only because I like to have a nice shine on my projects, and plus there's a little bit more protection with it going outside. There is better finishes out there and more expensive finishes, but for these little simple, simple projects that basically anybody can do. It works for me. I painted the black back on this one for some reason. But anyways, there you have it. So there's our little Charlie Brown project. Routed out on fencing wood. It measures in 11 inches by 6 inches. And then we cut it out with a Pegasus 5 spiral blade on the scroll saw. Thank you very much for watching.